Hi, I'm Jack from White Lies. And I'm Harry from White Lies, and this is a track by track uh, dissection of our album, Done By Us. It's out on the 19th of Jan. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, track one, Death, um, is a song that if anyone's heard of White Lies will, will probably know of. It was our first commercial release, um, and also the second song we ever wrote and demoed. Um, it certainly, before the recording process, set a precedent for what White Lies sounds like. Uh, a lot of the sounds in that song were, were stumbled, upon, uh, stumbled upon completely by accident, but um, then uh, uh, cropped up in, in various other songs at various moments. And, and I think a lot of people will, who have heard the song Death will find it's a really good taster for the rest of the album. Okay, second track on the album is a song called To Lose My Life, which is the title track of the album as well. It uh, is also the next single, comes out on Monday the 12th of January. Um, this is a song which we wrote very quickly um, when we were in the studio in Brussels, because we went into the studio to record the album, we only had five songs fully formed and demoed previously, so we had to we had to uh, do a lot of kind of improvisation there, and that song was a, was a song that came together really quickly, and uh, it feels kind of quite instant and has kind of good energy about it. I think it, it makes for a makes for a good kind of lead-in single for the album, and hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as we enjoyed writing it. The third track on the record is called "A Place to Hide." It, um, it was written very much along the same lines as, as "To Lose My Life." It was one of the songs we wrote in the studio. Uh, we had very little idea of what the song was going to turn out like before we started the recording process. And um, in slowly layering it with instruments and, and polishing the song, we managed to make something that we were all incredibly happy with and actually thought for quite a while it was going to be a, a big single on the album. But who knows, maybe later on down the line, the third or fourth single, we might release it. But um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good song. We think it's a good song and we enjoy playing it live. It's, it's great. The next, uh, the next track on the album, number four, is uh, a song called 50 on Our Foreheads, which again was another song we wrote in the studio and uh, kind of a, a weird subject matter. Charles wrote the lyrics about a kind of, uh, the concept was kind of the death of the sun and uh, people going on a kind of... Children. Ch ch yes, children, going on a kind of mission to the sun. And um, this, uh, this is a song which really grown for us, you know, it was one that started off quite slowly and has quickly become a, a, a real favourite for us and I think it's also a live favourite as well, really, we really kind of prog out the ending a bit and uh, yeah it's a strange, it's a strange beast this song but um, hopefully it will kind of worm, worm its way into people's uh, favourites list. The next song, Unfinished Business, track number five, was perhaps as a song the biggest turning point for White Lies. It was the first song we ever wrote together, uh, first song we demoed and, and it was what killed off our former band Fear of Flying and started up White Lies just a little bit over a year ago. Um, lyrically it's about uh, um, a young man and his partner and they have an argument and he realises that his, his partner has, has killed him with a pair of scissors and he is visiting her from beyond the grave and he's seeing her guilt and her, her sadness as death and uh, just witnessing it as a ghost I suppose and uh, that's what the song is about, it's about the, the sadness on her part, the loss of his life and also his, uh, his sadness and regret that the whole situation happened. Um, so quite disturbing and dark, um, which, is, which tends to be the uh, nature of our lyrics and our songs. But um, it's yeah, it's a, it's a big track for us, and it, it's uh, it's got it's got a well-deserved place in the album. I really like it. All right, the sixth track on the uh, on the album is a song called EST. Um, it is a song about um, the kind of. Uh, the treatments that they used to give mental patients in, in the olden days where they used to kind of uh, give them an electro electro shock therapy, which is what it stands for. Um, and yeah, this is, a, this is quite a strange song because I think maybe you can listen to it and it kind of floats over you a bit. It's, it's quite, it's, it's a big kind of pompous song, but it's got a kind of sheen to it, which means that it, you, you, can, you can listen to it maybe without realising what's going on. and. Uh, and for me, it's probably uh, probably one of my top two tracks on the album. I think it's, uh, it's a real favourite, and uh, I might be because I, I enjoyed the drumming in it, which which I had to do with, obviously. But yeah, I think this is uh, a, a possibly a bit of a dark horse on the album. I think people will, will love this one. 
Track number seven on the album is called From the Stars. It was uh, it was one of the group of songs that we came in to the recording process with it pretty much finished. Um, one of the first five songs we wrote as a band. Uh, lyrically, it's about a sort of washed up celebrity um, vying for attention at a sort of, sort of quite, um, quite well attended funeral and then uh, going back to his hotel room and and sort of mourning his his loneliness and his his sadness at the loss. Uh, at least that's my interpretation of it. I'm sure Charles, the lyricist, has something completely different in mind. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's another favourite of ours to play live. I particularly enjoy it because I think the the melody line um, is really good, and I, I enjoy singing it. Um, but, uh, again, it's one of the, the first songs we've finished recording on the album and, and it's set a precedent for, the, for a lot of the sound in the rest of the record. Okay, track, number, track number eight on the album is a song called Farewell to the Fairground. Um, it is uh, possibly going to be a single at some point, I think I'll probably say that. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's one of the more upbeat, more instant songs on the album, I think. Um, you know, it, it, it kicks in straight away and for a long while we opened our set with that song because we uh, we really like the kind of punchiness and the immediate the immediate attention grabbing uh, style that it has and um, yeah it's going to be, hopefully it's going to be the next single and uh, it's going to be a few kind of crazy remixes of it as well which is always, uh, always fun so yeah, look out for that one. The next song, Nothing To Give, um, was a particular highlight for all of us on the record I think. It was a song that came together very near the end of the recording process and within the space of about two days of beginning to write the song we decided we were going to put a string section on it and, and make it sound uh, head and shoulders above uh, in terms of, of, of sort of um, otherworldly sounds above the rest of the record and uh, we tried to be incredibly original with the way it sounded and I think um, it worked very well. It was amazing to, to see within the space of a week the song um, start, start, starting to be written and then moving into an unstudio for the string session and then by the end of the week finishing the song um, in, its, in the form you hear now and uh, it's definitely a, a big moment for all of us on the record. Okay, so um, if you're still with us, you've reached the end of our album. This song is called The Price of Love. Um, originally, it, I think we were going to have this song actually start the album. It's one of those songs where it's, it's got to come first or last really. It, it was, we demoed it um, before we went in to record it properly and we kind of had a, a structure together but then when we went to record the album we, we realised we could do a lot, mo like a lot more with it and, uh, and really kind of go to town a bit with the, with the sounds and the kind of progression of the song so in many ways it's, it's quite a quite a progged out song, it has, it has about six or seven completely original sections in the song um, nothing repeats itself at all throughout the whole song and it is a kind of uh, gruesome tale of kidnap and uh, desperation and it, f it really kind of feels like a good end to the album and uh, it's, it's uh, probably my favourite track on the album, yeah, a good end.